Justin and I would like to welcome you to our common prayer dealing with music and its connection to our spiritual lives. When Justin and I were asked to lead this common prayer, we spent a lot of time on the idea of being a soloist versus working in an, in an ensemble. Both require certain skills, but both are important to being a well-rounded musician. In order to elaborate on this idea, we have three reflections dealing with characteristics helpful to having both a successful relationship with God and a successful life in music, practice, taking risks, and listening. After each reflection, we will have a short period of time for personal reflection. We invite everyone to take that time to reflect as we have music playing in the background. As an opening prayer, I have chosen a prayer that is somewhat near and dear to my heart. The music ministry often uses this prayer before Mass each week. This prayer reminds me that our music is not something that we practice just for ourselves. It is a gift granted to us by God, and we are meant to share that with everyone. Keeping this in mind, I invite everyone to join me in the prayer printed in your worship aid. God of all good gifts, you have given us hearts, hands, and voices to praise you all our days. May we use your gifts wisely. May we be humble in service to you and to your people whom we serve. Remind us that it is for your glory our music is made, not for our own. Open our hands and lips, O Lord, and we shall proclaim your praise. Please stand and join in singing, Sing to the Mountains. We will sing verses 1 and 3. spent countless hours practicing piano in the basement of the Abbot Pennings Hall of Fine Arts. Although some of these hours are not as productive as others, and some are far more of a struggle than anything else, every hour has been time well spent. I've been prepared when the time for recital arrives. Without practice, the musician never advances towards his or her goal, whatever that goal may be. In my case, practice is devoted to preparing music for recital, for sharing an emotional experience, for leading listeners through whatever musical journey the pieces take. And in this preparation, as I struggle to progress and to achieve, 
to grasp and understand, I realize that I am oftentimes struggling against myself. To practice something is to utilize and cultivate self-discipline. It is this self-discipline that has brought me face to face with myself, to know truly who I am. And this is no simple task. It takes not only self-mastery, but an open heart and an accepting heart. In my spiritual life, the struggle for self-mastery exists in an even stronger form. I have learned to take what works in one area of life and apply it to another. Consistent, good practice takes a wealth of patience. Patience with oneself. Good practice also adapts itself to the needs of the individual day in and day out. We must employ this good practice in our spiritual lives through prayers and meditation. Just as I practice piano every day, so too do I practice my prayers. I give back to God everything he has given to me to be used as an instrument of his grace. Noshe te ipsum. Know thyself. This phrase has been attributed to several different ancient Greeks. But ultimately, to understand oneself is to understand other humans as well. I know and accept who I am, who we are, and so I am confident not only in offering myself to God, but confident in our prayers of thanksgiving and petition. In my music, I strive to share a vast, exciting, and passionate universe that we can each learn to call our own. In my prayers and spiritual life, I strive to share a vast, exciting, and wonderful world with all of my brothers and sisters so as to prepare us all for the eternal world to come.
It's truly an honor to be working in a department with students like Justin and Brittany and Damien, and Humbling as well. Um, they approached me several weeks ago to uh, be a faculty member that would be willing to speak as part of Sacred Hour and sent several questions that I um, could use as part of my reflection and meditation and discussion. Um, one that I'd like to start with are, what are the risks worth taking in life, both spiritually and musically? When examining the risks that have been presented in my life, I try to keep in mind that while I'm on this human journey, it is necessary to be open to God's call. A risk by its own nature contains a certain level of unrest. Many times we may feel resistance to taking risks and sense only the anxiety that goes with them. But that same mix of emotions we feel inside draws us into new experiences. To live life to its fullest, it is necessary for us to try to discover God's purpose for us. And this often involves risks. Personally, I remember many times when I felt that a new journey was clearly placed in front of me. Each new journey came with its own set of risks, and they can create anxiety or an unsettling feeling, uncertainty, and they demand a certain level of faith and a certain level of trust. When Brittany talked to me about speaking at this sacred hour, she suggested I might take a moment to speak about my journey towards a music major and a career in music. I came from a very conservative Christian home where, as a woman, I was encouraged not to have too high a grade point average. It might be threatening to a potential husband. It, I, and I say this, I think that they, my parents really wouldn't like to hear me say that at all. On the other hand, I really believe that when they raised me, they were preparing me to be a model Christian wife. Um, so it was meant to be out of love and no, re, no disrespect intended. It's that life has thrown many changes to females um, as time has passed. Although I was encouraged to pursue a college education at a family school rather strongly, I was told that the major itself didn't matter as it would have little to do with my life as a wife and mother. It was also subtly stated that I might not have the academic ability to major in music. Our hometown valedictorian had to drop the music major at the same school I was at because she was unable to successfully pass the music theory component of the major. In the middle of my freshman year, one spot opened at the top auditioned choir at the college I was attending. This is pretty big stuff. All audition sheets from um, incoming freshmen were re-examined for a female that might have a vocal range and a tone color necessary for the ensemble and also have a strong ability to read music and retain music. Eleven women were chosen from my ensemble to move on to a higher level of audition. We were then re-auditioned again and five of us were sent on to a final audition. In the next part of the process, it was very intense, and I eventually ended up being selected for a position in a choir that I had never seen as truly attainable for me as a musician. By the end of my freshman year, I was very active in music performance, and I was sitting in chapel today, much like your sacred hour, and reflecting on a story that was presented in Matthew 25. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who calls his servants and delivers unto them his goods. To one he gives five talents, to another two, and to another one. Every man according to his ability. Um, he that received five talents went and traded the same and made five other talents. Likewise, he that had two also gained another two. But he that received one went and dug a hole in the earth and hid his Lord's money. The one with five talents invested them and gained another five talents more. The same with the man who had two. The man who was given one said, I was afraid. I hid them in the earth. And the master took the talent from him and gave it to, the, to that, those who had ten. For everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away. When it came to my own music ability, I knew that I did not have the five talents, because I know many musicians who do. But I knew that I had been given about two to three. So if I considered my musical abilities to be a gift from God, 
Would it be a better choice for me to invest in music or to bury my talents? The thought stayed with me for a long time until I decided to register for freshman theory. Because I had one year of college behind me, I was able to complete the daily tasks necessary to achieve academic success in the music major. Sometimes we're not aware of a call until we look back at our life and see how opportunities presented themselves and how our decisions we made shape who we are today. As my life continues, I find that if I make time to pray and reflect, I can begin to connect to where I am being called. If you've not done so, it is worth visiting the St. Norbert uh, College webpage and reading the mission statement for the college. You can go to A to Z and click on M and you'll see mission statement. It discusses communio, the Catholic liberal arts tradition, and the Norbertine traditions. One of them calls us to pray and reflect both communally and individually. When we take time to quiet our lives and pray and reflect, we are most open to hearing God's call. But God's call will always involve a risk. The Bible has great stories of those who are willing to accept these life-changing spiritual risks. Stories of Noah and Moses, Ruth, David, Mary, and Paul. All were people who were willing to be able and open to the call of God and accept the path that was set before them. I have uh, a few quotes that I would like to read in regard to the um, idea of taking risks. George Bernard Shaw, a life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. Uh, Keshavan Nair, with courage, you will dare to take risks, have the strength to be compassionate, and the wisdom to be humble. Courage is the foundation of integrity. Louisa May Alcott, I'm not afraid of storms, for I'm learning how to sail my ship. And M. Scott Peck, there can be no vulnerability without risk. There can be no community without vulnerability. There can be no peace and ultimately no life without community. It's worth taking time to reflect on the questions that Brittany and Justin ask today. What does a spiritual risk mean to you or look like to you? Is it worth taking? And do the spiritual risks you take help you grow?
We live in a fast-paced world. That's obvious. We have many encounters with people and engage ourselves in many conversations. Throughout our day, however, how often do we truly pay attention to what is happening? We see things, but do we watch? We know things, but do we understand? We hear things, but do we listen? Listening requires action. Hearing does not. I'll be the first to say that listening is difficult. There's no getting around that. In the, music, in the music world, listening is very important. When we tune before a band rehearsal or concert, we all sit there and play the same note. The same note. Think about that. All 40-some people on stage playing the same note. Maybe even more, maybe even more, than, more than 40. How in the world does an entire band play the same note and be able to get in tune? Listening. We all listen to the same note, and the amount that we have to adjust in individually is usually pretty, pretty slight. We have to listen to ourselves in order to know if we are in tune or out of tune. Notice also that this usually takes place before a band concert or rehearsal. Band and choral people warm up before a rehearsal, concert, or recital. We need to spend time listening to how, to how we sound. If, if we don't, how do we contribute to the band or choir or even the audience? This is also true with practicing. We must practice on our own, again, listen to ourselves so that we can contribute to the band and to the, and to the audience. When musicians play as a soloist, for instance, on a recital, the concept of giving yourself and contributing as an individual is, st is still there. Again, you have to practice and tune before the, be before the recital in order to contribute musically and share music with the audience. We talk about the soloist versus the ensemble. Both require you to listen to yourself beforehand in order to share with the community. Once you're in that community, however, you must listen again to the people around you to be in tune with the band. Listening is contributing to the final product that is being shared with the listeners. We cannot share with others what we do not possess. In our lives, we must listen to ourselves. We must reflect upon what we say and do each day. We must be contemplatives in, in action so that we can contribute to the relationships and people around us. We must also try to listen to God. This, I will also be the first one to say, can be very difficult. Again, spending time and reflection and listening to ourselves and people around us is important in this, in this process. How can we begin to know and understand God if we hear things but don't listen, if we see things but don't watch closely? Finally, if we know things but don't understand. Listening leads to action, to being in tune. How do you listen to yourself? How do you listen to others? How do you listen to God? How are you in tune?
Damien, Dr. Parks, and Justin have highlighted through their reflections the significance of practice, taking risks, and listening. Practice allows us to eventually share music with others, just as building a personal faith life with God allows us to share our faith with others. Taking risks is helpful for learning music and learning more about life, as long as you are careful of what risks you take. <clears throat> Finally, listening is essential to help, helping contribute to an ensemble, just as it is important for us to listen closely to the call of God. All three skills are important to being a soloist or performing in an ensemble, just as they are important in our spiritual lives. It is vital for us to take time to grow in our personal relationship with God, to take some spiritual risks, and to listen closely to what God is calling us to do. When all three components are complete in perfect harmony and balance, our music and spirituality can really take life. Thank you for coming to our common prayer on music and spirituality. Please stand to join me in, in the prayer. Oh Lord, please bless this music that it might glorify your name. May the talent that you have bestowed upon me be used only to serve you. Let this music be a witness to your majesty and love, 
and remind us that you are always watching and listening from your throne above. May your presence and beauty be found in every note, and may the words that are sung reach the hearts of your people so they will draw closer to you. May your spirit guide us through every measure so that we might be the instruments of your peace and proclaim your glory with glad voices. Please join us in singing the closing song, How Can I Keep From Singing? We will sing verses 1 through 3. Yeah. 